bring them out, bring them out, bring them out, bring them out. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready for Bring Them Out with your hosts, Joel Richardson and Alan Hill. <laughs> Hey, this is uh, Joel Richardson coming to you from the new home of Soul Joel's at the historic Sunnybrook Ballroom for another episode of Bring Them Out with my co-host, the one and only Alan Hill. What's up, brother? Good to so, see you as always. Last episode, we did get to know Joel. Yes, sir. And now we're going to get to know you. If anybody knows they've been to a show, your laugh is probably... <laughs> Just as distinguishable, if not more so, than mine. <laughs> yeah, which, which you're doing this podcast wonders. You're, <laughs> your shoulders must be heavy because you're carrying the weight. Any joke that I have, you're just really embellishing the laugh. I appreciate it, I brother. Love it, man. But it's genuine. It um, it you call you away from uh, uh, Lancaster, um, but you have a huge music background. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of similarities between music and comedy. Um, you're, you're in a band. Um, and uh, Snap Squatch. Yep. And uh, you've been teaching um, Rock Levitz, right? Lidditz. Lidditz. Yep. I nice. knew I was going to mess close. it up. Close. It's hard one to remember. Yeah. No yeah. Worries. Uh, and so you, you had been teaching for what, 25 years? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the guitar. And when you're in a band and you're performing a gig, like with comics, uh, I mean, I, I might be the exception to the rule because I'm only going up to host. Mm -hmm. So I have a couple of things I want to talk about. When you're writing a set list, like uh, in in music, is it the same? Where like you, you have a set list, or and you guys kind of like ebb and flow, or you might change it based on the crowd, or does uh, does the band always play like two or three sets, and and do you kind of mix and match what order the songs go in? It's a great question, and it's it's different with my band than with a lot of bands because we are at least 50%, if not more, what's called a jam band, you know, like okay. Fish or the Grateful Dead, that kind of thing, Allman Brothers. So um, let's start with the set list idea. So we always make a set list, always. Um, we also improvise a lot. So okay. I think our band might be a little more similar to comedians in that respect. Yeah. Because most, I think, a, not most, but a lot of bands, the vast majority, um, they have a set list and okay. they play the song the same way most nights. You okay. know what I mean? Um, our goal is to never play the song the same way twice. Okay. You know, so we're going to play um, Shake Down Street by the Grateful Dead, for instance. Okay? It's like a funky Grateful Dead tune. But um, there are sections of improv within that okay. that we're going to get different during. And maybe that's the band equivalent of crowd work maybe or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, but mostly we're, we're creating a set list. If we have to play for an hour... We make a set list that is as close to an hour as we can make it. Um, oh, no, not not like you, know, you don't you don't try to make it like an hour and nineteen minutes, and then figure you have to trim off of it. Well, this okay. From our experience, we've been we've been a band since I think our first gig was oh nine or ten, and uh, um, we've learned over the years that when we create a set list, and we think it's going to be sixty minutes. It actually comes in closer to seventy-five or eighty minutes because really? because of our improv. Now, now from a comedy standpoint, mm -hmm. it's the opposite. No kidding, because you end up talking faster or something or talking things like that faster. or whatever. Yeah, and you're like, I left some room for an applause break. Mm. That wasn't. <laughs> you're like, I thought I I gave some room for laughter. <laughs> Turns out there wasn't any. That's great. Fourteen minutes, I'm off the stage. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome, man. No, no, I'm just making an example. Right? That, that's, no, that's perfect. That's so funny. Yeah, it's a trip, man. Yeah, it's very, it's different in that regard. And uh, I think most bands are probably have the similar thing to a com uh, comedian where they have to plan for to, for being a little faster than normal. Okay. But we are a very self indulgent, <laughs> lots of solos jam band. Not really. I'm kidding. About yeah, the yeah, yeah, of course. Plan. But. Uh, but we are more of a great. And I'm, I'm not laughing because I'm thinking about my next question. Okay. <laughs> We're gonna plow through these questions. <laughs> I love it, man. Hey, Joel, a little reaction. <laughs> it's hard when I lose my audience of one. Remember that giving thing you said I was doing. <laughs> hey, hey, Ebenezer Scrooge. 
who's giving me nothing. <laughs> Please, sir. Yeah. Can I have some scraps? Yeah. A little shekel. <laughs> a little something oh, in episode three. <laughs> That's awesome. Boy, we're barely getting through this, huh? I love it. I love it. Whew. So, yeah. Ton- <laughs> <laughs> You're, you're one big you're one big pause button because I forgot where we were, but you clearly remember. <laughs> yes, yeah, so lots of similarities, lots of differences. Like um, uh, we were talking a minute ago off camera about the uh, the difference in just material right. for comedians versus mu- musicians. Yeah, you know, because of the the comedians, as soon as a special comes out, they consider that material burnt. Done. That's it, right? Unless maybe you have. Um, uh, a gaffer, you know, has a hot pockets or something, or dice will do the the rhymes. You right. know what I mean? Some things still like that. Still gotta do the hits. But you're still doing 55 minutes of new material from from the last time. You know? Well, and if I remember correctly too, this is where uh, bands can be different than comics, where you can sneak some jokes in there because mm-hmm. Pete, like your your the interlude in between songs. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and, and whoever it is can talk to the audience a little bit to engage them. Absolutely. Use it as like an engagement tool, the power of laughter. Yes. Where comics, every word that comes out of their mouth is being analyzed by the audience. Totally. Going, what's their point? Why are they saying this? Where's the joke? 100%. They're man. looking at me like, what time's the show start? Yeah, right, right. When, when is this guy up there going to stop giving good points? <laughs> <laughs> the show started the minute I got on stage. Right, right, yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, this man. is me warming up the crowd. And the bar's low. If, I, if me or, or my lead singer more likely is going, Keith is, uh, yo, what's up, Gav, Keith, Steve, Matt? Um, uh, he, If one of us is going to engage a crowd that way, the bar is really low if we want to be funny. Nobody's yeah. expecting us to be funny. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> All right. So, so Keith can go up there and do one of his dad jokes he likes to do and get a, get a good chuckle from the crowd. And you that's know another I mean? reason why it's the opposite of comedy, where you have a set list of 60 minutes and it's going to be end up 75 because mm-hmm. you throw in a story. Right. Or you're pausing in between whatever it is. Right. Then that's, that's, why, that's where your set list becomes a little bit more. Well, we ran into that one night. We play a place in uh, Marietta, PA called McCleary's. It's kind of our home base. Shout out to McCleary's. Um, I'm <laughs> shouting out everybody. So, uh, um, so one night, I w- I've been using the same guitar strap since I was 16 years old. Okay. okay? And I'm now in my 40s yeah okay and we're in the middle the middle of one of the first songs of the set and right in the middle of the song my strap breaks okay so i'm holding the guitar in the air like it's a very hard it's hard for a non-guitar player to understand but it's awkward it's hard it's like you know all of a sudden you have to hold the microphone like this or something and uh um so i got through the song and a buddy of mine was in the crowd lives next door also a musician he runs over grabs a strap there's a little pause between the, the songs while I put my strap on, and then I, I, I announce to the crowd, I've got my strap on. Well, that added about five minutes to the set because the crowd went crazy with the idea of me having a strap on. Yeah. <laughs> and Gavin's family was there. You better believe it. <laughs> Gavin had about 12 family members there. Yeah. And if I'm funny at all, not professional comedy funny, but if I have any humor, a large part of it comes from him and his family because you got to be a roast-level comic just to sit down at dinner at that family. So they never let him live that down? No, or me especially. Right. Yep. The whole night between every song, some sort of strap-on comment, you know what I mean? It was great, and it added a ton of minutes to the show. It made it better and super cool and unique, Yeah. but we ended up having to cut a song or two because of that, so it, was, it, it all worked out. I wasn't even going to bring this up, but you got to tell the story of what happened on the way here tonight. Oh, jeez. That was crazy, so yeah. So you're in an Uber. Yeah, I'm in an Uber on the way down. Yep. And uh, um, the driver gets to the entrance of Soul Joel's right by the Wendy's. And he has his turn signal on. And there's a guy coming the other, opposite direction. There's no traffic anywhere. There's no red light anywhere near him. And he just stops in the middle of the road. And it was confusing. He may have been trying to be nice, but it was hard to read. And, and, and he was either going to make a left at the traffic light to go on to 422. Correct. Or perhaps go into the hospital across the street. Yeah, absolutely. Earlier. So that would make perfect sense. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. So he sat there for a minute. He didn't have his turn signal on, so we didn't know if he was turning. And uh, um, eventually my Uber driver inches forward. At the same time, that guy inches forward. So now the Uber driver's like, I don't know what to do. You know, he, Playing he, a little game of chicken. Yeah. And he, so he flashes, yeah, and he flashes him with his high beams and drives on. And that was the end of it as far as I thought, right? And then, you know, a minute later, I'm getting out of the car, and I, 
I notice there's a car behind us, which I didn't think anything about. He kind of mean mugs me, and I got unfolded myself out of the tiny car. He took one look at me, went, and drove off as fast as he could. Right. <laughs> and now, as comedy would have it, things happen in threes. They saw the size of Alan, his beard, and Eagles jersey, <laughs> and was like, this guy is not going to handle another loss. The Eagles just lost to the Super Bowl, and I'm not taking a loss. This guy's going to beat the ever-living <laughs> out of me. Don't deal with a desperate yeah. man. <laughs> Do I want it? No. <laughs> and then drove off for the second time. <laughs> that was pretty funny, man. That was pretty funny. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. I know. That blew my mind. Yeah. yeah and I'm too old to scrap, so let's, uh, I'm glad he drove on. <laughs> and, and that's another bonding moment that we had. Oh, dude, yes. So, and 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 not even bringing that up, but that like kind of ties this whole thing totally, together. Yeah, absolutely. So, I'm always a guy that I like. I want to support those that support me. Mm -hmm. So, whether it's another small business or a sponsor, local businesses, we all we're all in this together. It's been a community support. It's the reason why I'm still where I'm at. It's because of all these local people supporting us and finding out everything about you and and how passionate you are about music. I'm like. Well, would your band ever want to uh, open up for one of the comics? And you were like, yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't even think I finished the sentence. I didn't even ask how much you were going to pay or anything. Right. I you was were just like, like yes. Yeah, it's, it's a yes yeah. for me. Yes. Yeah, and I'm like, you have four other people in the band. You're like, it's a yes for them. <laughs> I, I think I could talk for the boys. We're, but, we're getting it done. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, well, you took your pandemic calendar out of the paper, uh, out of the plastic. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're available. Yeah, we literally hadn't played a gig since COVID. Oh yeah, right, right. And, and obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm tongue in cheek. I'm joking, but like no, you were like, that's why. That's why you could like. I firmly can ask. Well, you know me with comedy too. It didn't matter if I had the busiest schedule in the world. It would have been a yes. Right. So it's gonna be for Brewer. Mm -hmm. And which is um, I'm ecstatic. It's ecstatic, <laughs> right? And ended up being on a Sunday. Mm, that's right. Yeah, because it got a rained out on Friday night. Yeah, yeah. And. Uh, so I had the joke that Tiger Woods always wore red on Sunday. So I always wore pink. <laughs> so we're getting ready. We're, we're, uh, I'm there. I'm all, and that's how, why I always had a good tan. Yeah. Because we're working outside. Yep. Again, to bring up his name, the Saint. The Saint was there, man. The Saint, kicking, and, yep. and, and he wanted to tan evenly. Working hard as always. So uh, he's, he's topless. <laughs> no other way to describe him. <laughs> it was very distracting. Very distracting. <laughs> and... A guy, because now now we're we're this is pre dome, mm -hmm. so we're yep. in this field, and just a wide open sand. The speakers are pointed away from the borough, mm -hmm. so they're pointed towards Spring City. Yep, yep. But we didn't realize that water amplifies the sound. So not <laughs> only did it carry because it was into the uh, the wilderness, but is the, it that the, creek? Yeah, the Schuylkill River. Oh, is that the river? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's a river. Geography, not my specialty. <laughs> well, but I, here, that's what I I, I, I said. Uh, I said, oh yeah, look at the creek, and uh, Jack McDermott goes, it's a brook. <laughs> it's a brook. That's where Sunny Brook got its name. <laughs> I go, you're a dick. You're a dead on dick. <laughs> dead on. <laughs> dead on dick. Yeah. <laughs> But he's right. <laughs> but he's right, yes. It was a bro. Oh, so funny. that was the Schuylkill River that eventually goes into the uh, the Delaware. And uh, so it amplifies the sound. And that, you guys are all getting tuned up. Mm -hmm. The first show is at 6 o'clock, so people are going to start showing up at 4.30, like it's a tailgate, you yep. know? And uh, doors open at 5, but we didn't have doors. So they showed up at whatever <laughs> right, time they, come, they, want. they come, yep. Start the tailgate, it's BYOB. Yep. And a uh, guy on his Harley, bald head. Aviator sunglasses, so you know he's a dick. Yeah. <laughs> he's wearing the dick ensemble. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and Rome Rome pulls up and goes, you the owner? And I was like, oh, man. And I had flip-flops on. Dude, flip-flops, pink shirt, yep. shorts. Yep. The least intimidating outfit ever put together by yep. man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I was getting back to my wrestling days. I was ready to go. Oh, I saw it. And I saw the guy, like, taking pictures. And, and he goes, you're, you, uh... And you guys are tuning up, mm -hmm. right? And and he, and he goes, uh, I, you know, you gotta, you you're over there. I'm over there trying to raise my family. I'm like, I'm trying. I'm over here trying to take care of my family too. Try to survive this pandemic, because the minute they start, he started fighting with me. I got defensive, dude. Well, I had put down my guitar. Oh, when okay. I saw this, because I was like, hey, somebody's gotta have his back. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And 
uh, I started walking towards the hill to get up to you guys. And right when I was like getting to the base of that hill, yeah, you said what you just said about yeah. I need to feed my family. And when you said it, you took about three steps forward. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I was like, forgot about that. Yeah, I was like, I think he's got this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, this is just fine. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean, I was like, oh, because I knew. I mean, I'd known you for about maybe a month, month and a half at that point. Yeah, yeah. And I knew you're a super nice guy, super like you know. Yeah, yeah. Can work a crowd like nobody's business. You know what I mean? But then I learned you had a serious backbone. Oh yeah. Yeah. Don't mistake kindness for yeah. weakness. I I was ready to. Uh, no, I say that all the time, mm -hmm. and it's a gift and a curse. Yeah. But I was ready to tip this guy off his motorcycle. Yeah, I saw it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I saw it. That's no joke. And when I started going at him, <laughs> he goes, all I'm saying is turn the speakers the other way. And he, he took off. He pushed out in a hurry. Yeah. In a hurry. I, and and I was, never saw that guy again. He was out of there. It was within 20 seconds of you saying what you said. Yeah. We were, we were smelling his, his exhaust. But I thought that was like a bonding moment. Man. It was, dude. It was yeah. because, you know, yeah. No, I learned a lot about you right in that moment. Yeah. You know what I mean? I liked what I learned. Right. <laughs> That's so cool, man. Yeah, man. No, yeah. it was an amazing. It was it was really wild, and it was like, that was a wild time. You were dealing with all kinds of stuff trying to get that done. Yeah. You know, and this guy just comes sniffing around like some idiot because, you know, because there's people making people laugh until 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. Give me a break. Well, and, and, and so, and it wasn't until a couple months ago that I really realized what you were going through. Mm -hmm. So, not to deep that, uh, dive that far into it, but... You found out that you weren't able to hold a guitar anymore. Yeah. So, after 25 years, you realize it's like that's something that it's all you know. Yeah. And and you were coming, and I I figured because you're a huge fan, mm -hmm. but it's also became like an escape, something to look forward to. Big time. So that I didn't realize. Yeah, this was that was huge this year, man. Because like you said, I've been I've been I started teaching guitar when I was 24. I'm 48, and I've been teaching since I was 24 been playing in band since I was 17. Right. You know, and I've never put the guitar down for more than a couple of days that whole time, you know. And uh starting last uh January in January 2022, um I started getting headaches and neck and back back pain and uh I've been dealing with a uh, frustrating year with doctors trying to get it taken care of. I'm working on a different angle now. I'm feeling as good as I have since all this started. So I, I'm trying to ease my way back here, and I'll be back at some point. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, I'm not done. Have you picked up a guitar? Since? I have, and I've been able to do it in a limited basis. Okay. But it's better than it was when I put it down, but it's still not good. So I'm trying to really be careful about it. And, and you're a hands-on teacher, so like yeah. it's it's. Not... I have to play to be able to teach. Yeah. Right. I'm just I'm, it's too limited. I'm, I wouldn't. Because you be... can still instruct, but it's it's all it, you have to. You got to show. Yeah, you got to show, speak, and show. Yeah, it's like if you went to play a, you know, if you went to take a play basketball, and your right. coach couldn't shoot anymore, it's very hard to teach you how to shoot. Right. <laughs> if somebody's not showing you how to do it, you know. Yeah. What I mean? So yeah. Now another another analogy is um, comedy is one on one, right? Mm -hmm. Like you're up there by yourself. It's always like a wrestling analogy that I, I like that's one thing that I loved about comedy. Now, you're a part of a, a five piece five piece, right? Yeah, yeah. Five piece band. Yeah. Um, can you also play solo? Well, or do you feel like naked without your boys? <laughs> that's a good question. Yeah, and it's funny because I've talked to comics about this concept where okay. cause where um you guys are like when I went to my first like I don't know how many shows when I was first going to comedy shows, I used to always take a picture before the show yep. of just the stage and okay. the microphone stand and the mic just sitting there, maybe just, a stool sitting there, yep. whatever, right? And uh, the calm it, before the storm. Yes, yes, because it blew my mind that somebody was going to come out and using nothing but what we're doing now yeah. was going to entertain the shit out of these three hundred people or however many people were there that night. Right. You know what I mean? With nothing but what's here and here. Right. You know what I mean? And that's amazing to me. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I have a team. That's how I look at it. You okay. know what I mean? I have a team. Like if um, if I'm feeling anxious at night or whatever, yeah. I know my boys have me. Dish it off. Yeah. If I miss a note, they're going to cover for me. You know, right. They're going to cover the best they can. And the audience probably won't notice. Right. Right. Like one note or whatever. Like you'll notice. It'll drive you crazy. Yeah. Well, this is, the, this is interesting too because uh, – People that don't play music know they can't do what I do. You know what I'm saying? They know that. They know that they are not going to put in the time to learn an instrument. To, yeah. Or that maybe they tried and didn't. It didn't right. Work. Whatever, whatever. Re whether it's reading music or playing by ear. Yeah. People know they can't do that. Right. And But everybody thinks they're funny. 
That, that, is, that is true. <laughs> now, I know I can't get up there and be funny for an hour. I'm no better. You right. know what I mean? But a lot of people think when you walk up there that they can do that. Yeah. Because they haven't been, they, they haven't accepted reality. <laughs> and, uh, and it's a fascinating thing. So it's a difference in um, how people view what we do, I think, sometimes, yeah. too. Like, oh, like if I, you know, I could go be funny. You know what I mean? Well, that happened <laughs> last week with Julian. Mm. So, so a guy, and I didn't know, mm-hmm. but he was an open micer. Okay. He came to the uh, door mm-hmm. and was paying for the $20. Okay. Ronan counts the money. And goes, you gave me too much. Hands him a dollar back. And he goes, gee, thanks. What am I going to go buy a pack of gum? And it's like, all right. Take the money out of the equation. Mm -hmm. But now Ronan was in a no situation, a no win situation. Right. Okay. He keeps a dollar. Now he's a scumbag. Right. Because he kept the dollar. Right. He gives a dollar back. And now he's being called out because, oh, what am I going to buy a pack of gum? Right. (laughs) <laughs> Morally, he did the right thing. Ethically, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. he wanted to give you the dollar back. Sure. So, and he says a couple other like off-putting remarks, and I'm like, "What is that?" I was like, "You handled that really, really good." Because I'm always thinking what I would have said or yeah. whatever, and I'm like, just real good professional, you know, professionally handled. But then he's in the audience, and I'm up on, of course, going first. This was that guy? Yeah. Oh, I know who you're talking about. Now. Okay, keep going. So I go on stage and. He immediately starts heckling me, and yep. I'm like, "Dude, this is, this is bad, man. Yeah. Like, if I'm talking to the crowd, which I do a lot, mm-hmm. but don't do it when I'm not asking for it. Absolutely. And don't try to. That's why you're upstage. Like, also, you're gonna try to get work or out stage, well, whatever. That's not gonna do it. It's not gonna do that's it. Gonna, that's gonna keep you from getting. Yeah. Work. So then I'm laughing like we talked about in the back of the crowd, mm-hmm. and the guy walks over to me, and says, "Oh man." There's, I can already name five reasons why I don't like this guy. And he's talking about Julian. Who he doesn't know is your childhood <laughs> friend. Well, and not only that, Julian but he... already said it on stage that him and I went to high school together. Oh, I guess he should have. I, and yeah. I said it when I introduced him. Forgetting the fact that he's an awesome professional comic. And just has, that alone. Yeah. <laughs> More TV credits that I can count. Unbelievable amount of credits. Yeah. Used to tour and open up for Jimmy Fallon. It's been on uh, the Tonight Show at least five times, six yeah. times. You know, two Comedy Central specials. Killed that comedy, night. Killed that night. Amy Schumer's uh, uh, movie and all that stuff. Warming up for Com- Colbert. All this great, all crazy that stuff. cool stuff. Yeah, yeah, two shows on E. Amazing. And I'm like, first of all, I mean, he wanted me to laugh at that. I'm like, what am I going to laugh at that for, man? You're coming to rip it on the guy I thought well enough to book tonight. Exactly. <laughs> Dude, wild. Wild. That's an interesting strategy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, do you have any heckling stories? Oh, interesting. Let me think. Well, okay, I have a fun one. I got boobies flashed at me one time. That's a fun one. That was great. That, I never thought would happen in because I thought you had to be in an 80s heavy metal band for that to happen. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I was playing in a jazz fusion band at the time, all instrumental. You know, crazy hard stuff. And uh, I was, yeah, it was a really good band, but it was not the kind of band. Oh, so know. it wasn't the current band? No, no, no. This was uh, tw- oh, 15, 20 years ago. Okay. And uh, we were playing in Reading, actually, at a place called the Brass Lantern. And uh, and it was like the pe- the people that were there were kind of the, um, like, uh, on the hippie side of things, you know? Okay. Especially, uh, I guess that was still the, ni- was that still the <laughs> 90s? One love. Oh, two loves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever fits into the tent, brother. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> so yeah, we're jamming and we're doing our thing. And I was young and I was the worst guy in the band. I was barely holding on. I was good enough, but I wasn't as good as them. And I did my one cool thing I did all night with I nailed a really cool guitar solo. And I looked out into the crowd and this girl with hairy armpits lifted up her son. No. Oh yeah, it was great. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. You could smell the patchouli from 20 feet away. It was killer. <laughs> that was uh, probably the highlight until playing uh, for uh, opening for Brewer of my uh, of my playing career. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> You're like, are those Harry Ompress? Whoa, would you look at that? <laughs> <laughs> howdy, howdy there, Luckily, cowboy. My focus went away from there pretty quickly. Oh, right? yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, that was funny. Yeah, that was funny. My, uh, oh, well, there's another good open mics. Okay. Okay, so 
the open mic, there was a place called, it's still in Lancaster, called Zootropolis. It started as a second-run movie theater years ago and then quickly found out that didn't make money and started doing other things, and one of them was an open mic. And it was one of those where anything goes, okay? So I would go and play with, like, I remember, like, there would be, like, a DJ going, like, quick, 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 along with us while we jammed, and we'd play, like, an upright bass player, me on guitar, a DJ, some dude playing bongos, and then some guy over here would be reading his poetry while we're playing or something, you know, just crazy weird stuff. And uh, I saw two things I'll never forget in the same night. One was a guy who carried around a notebook, yeah, a three ring binder this thick, and he would go from open mic to open mic, going through A to Z over and over and over again. Okay, hundreds of songs. And the night I saw him, he was finishing the Beatles and moving on to Chuck Berry. And the great thing about this guy is he sang completely monotone. He was a decent guitar player, but he would go like whether he did the "I Am the Walrus" by the Beatles, and he went, "I am the walrus, cuckoo, kachoo." Right, and that's how he said. <laughs> ever, that's the how. The, that was the dude. Tone I love of how song. you just stopped and looked at me. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's it. That was the whole that was the thing. thing. <laughs> that was the thing. So cuckoo kachoo cuckoo kachoo. <laughs> so he moves on to the to Chuck Berry, right? Okay. And this is what I'll never forget. He goes. He does uh, Johnny Be Good. Yeah. And he's going way down in Louisiana among the evergreens. Da, 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 you know, and he's going through the whole song like that, and then he gets to the part where the guitar solo would be. Okay. Now he's playing acoustic guitar and singing, and he doesn't do the guitar solo. He yells out, "Guitar solo!" Okay, and keeps strumming chords while going, "Wah na 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 na, wah na 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 na, wah na na na, wah na na na, wah wah wah," and he goes through the whole solo monotone singing it like that. I gave him a standing ovation. <laughs> But like it was, that was very Andy Kaufman esque. Totally, and I couldn't figure out if it was a bit or not. Right. And then it turns out it wasn't, which made it even better. No, no, no. <laughs> I was gonna say it sounds like it definitely it was, was not. Definitely not a bit. It was definitely not a bit. Dude, that is fantastic. Yeah, man. Yep. And then I gave two standing ovations in one night because there was also a piano, a grand piano, or a upright piano. I mean, standing, sitting in the corner, it rarely got used. And there's probably thirty people there. And this kid went up. He was a teenager when I was in my mid twenties or whatever. And he goes, I'm going to read a poem. And he starts reading this poem. It goes on for five minutes, okay? And it's, he was obviously a trouble, you know, he was like a sad youth. You know what I mean? Right. Like, he wrote like I felt when I was 15. Right. And, uh, um, and it went on. And every time he hit a sad or depressing note in his, in his poetry, he would slam the shit out of the piano. Okay, not trying to play it, just beat it, right? Two and a half minutes into this, blood's flying from his knuckles, okay? People are pouring out the door. Okay? <laughs> People are running away from this reading, okay? By the time he's done, I'm the only one sitting there. He slams the piano, wipes the blood on his head like war paint, and walks out. And I gave him a one-man standing ovation. It's still the greatest thing I've ever seen at an open mic. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> That's open mics. That's why I want to do a documentary about open mics. I mean, oh, so much cool it's stuff happens. You know what man. I mean? But w would you say in general, when people come um, to see a band, like, are are they like comedy crowds where like they're giving you energy and they're there to have a good time? That's a great question. It depends on the venue. Okay. Like, if you're doing the normal, you know, normal bar band thing, it's not like a uh, like like a a roadhouse where it's like it's not like a, a heavy drinking crowd where like these are power. Right, right. Yeah, we're not worried about power getting, drinkers. Yeah, and there's no shield blocking us from uh, right. <laughs> from thrown bottles. But, Shot in a beer. Yeah. Well, so what you're dealing with is like comedy club. Somebody has to buy a ticket. They're not just wandering into drink, right? Right. But what we deal with is the bar bands of the world. Is um, most of the people aren't even there to see us. If there's because like McCleary's, for instance, has two different dining rooms that aren't in the area where the band because half the time now there's not even a cover charge right You're right just, yeah. right yeah very rarely anymore it used to always be five bucks or something you know what i mean but they, they don't they stopped doing that along the way um and we'll we'll uh i forgot where i was going help me out um um good energy oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so so thank you <laughs> i'm listening so, brother <laughs> and, and i'm always ready after the pause so uh um so we have to go in and we'll probably draw 30, 40 people. You know what I mean? Something like that. Yeah. And But there's going to be 50, 60 people in that room. Right. And, you know, those people so are there. Extra to, 20, 25 people. Yes. And those people are there to drink. 
Right. You know what I mean? And they don't care who's there. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're going to ha- order the same thing and have the same approach to their evening, regardless of who's standing in the corner jamming out. Yeah. You know? So it's a little different. You know? Now, sometimes, like, when we get, um, like, a gig, uh, like, at a, at a music-only venue, yeah. you know, then it's more like the comedy thing. Then they're there to see you. You well, know what so I mean? the two worst heckles I've ever been a part of. Oh, lay it on me. <laughs> one was, uh, was and I, I don't even know what the heckle was, but it was a guy. We did a Wednesday night up in uh, Pleasantville, New York, near like mm-hmm. Westchester, New York. Okay. Um, but the guy was with 10 women. All right? One guy with 10 women. Yeah, one of them had to be his, <laughs> right? It's not there with a harem. <laughs> and it's like, dude, why are you stepping on our punchlines? Mm-hmm. Like... We're leaving after tonight, man. Oh, he's one we of those all dudes. drove together. We're not even hanging out after the show. Like, relax, dude. Like, why do you have to? Like, you, you don't have to walk into the room dick first. <laughs> totally. Like, you're he, the, you're there with ten women, man. Totally. Like, we're all, and it's just like, what are you doing? It's just bad energy. Yeah, man. And the other one was, uh, and I think I've told you the story before, but my first ever gig that I got paid for, uh, that I produced. Mm-hmm was a place called Mad Anthony's, two D's, and it was the the address was two and a quarter miles south of the Pocono Raceway. <laughs> that was the address. Yeah. It was half pizzeria, <laughs> half bar. Okay. Oh. And uh dude, I I, I, th- I don't even know what the 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 whole uh it was like six hundred bucks. Mm-hmm. But I uh I, I was in pharmaceutical sales, so they were paying my gas and, and uh insurance Perfect. And yeah, yeah, Every, all Perfect. the tolls, everything. So the one night, John Zaluga, who now is a uh, writer, producer for Impractical Jokers, mm-hmm. he's going to be there. Uh, this guy, Pat O'Shea, who was originally from Boston, was living in Brooklyn, produced his own shows as well, and Nate Bargatze. Oh, wow, okay. Okay. So Pat goes on stage, and there, it, you reminded me of the story because there was people at the bar that were just regulars, and it's their Friday night. We happen to be there once a month on a Friday, mm-hmm. and we're basically infringing on their time. Right, totally. You're taking over their normal terrain. They don't want to <laughs> shut up. Yeah, right. They didn't come for this listening party <laughs> right. to hear these comics <laughs> tell their witty jokes. <laughs> yeah. So, so Pat had this uh, this basically reference to a movie, going, "Shut up, Leon. Just shut up." And this guy goes, "That's a good idea." Why don't you shut the? And there's no coming back. Oh, dude, that's that's that's, that's a all mic we drop. have. That's a mic drop. Yeah, we have. <laughs> this is it. So you tell us to not do this. That's it. Dicey. Check yeah. me. Oh man, you're done. Woo. Yeah, and he did not recover. Oh. Okay. So uh, the rest of the show, Nate Nate does well. Nate does his thing, and uh, and Nate's phone dies, and he asked to borrow mine. And we're already driving back. He's sitting in front. Pat's sitting behind me and John Zaluga uh, on the back. All of a sudden, uh, you know, Nate's, I don't know who he's texting, whatever. And we get back over the, uh, the border of Pennsylvania, mm-hmm. back into New Jersey. We're headed back to New York. I'm going to drop them off. Okay. And uh, Nate goes, hey, man, you guys, we haven't even talked. You guys like rock and roll? And he puts on where uh, Howard used to be on before we went to Sirius XM, Mm -hmm. K-Rock. Yep, yep. And he puts on K-Rock, and it comes out of commercial, and he goes, uh, hey, this is Dan Soder. You're listening to K-Rock. He was the overnight DJ. They were best friends. I didn't know Soder did the DJ. Yeah, that's that's what got him to move from New York. I didn't uh, know. From Arizona to New York. I never knew that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Exactly, yeah. He was, yeah, exactly. And he goes... Um, that was just Enter Sandman by uh, by uh, Metallica. Um, by the way, we just got word that uh, Soul Joel's just rocked out in the Poconos no. and are on their way back to New York. No. New, uh, New York. And by the way, shut up, Pat. Just shut up. Well, I will tell you this, Pat O'Shea. I looked at the rearview mirror, and he turned ghost white. Dude. And uh, late. Again, the practical jokes could not stop laughing. <laughs> That's, oh man! And and because then all of a sudden Pat goes, man. All I could think, I was like, man, this is some commercial that Joel paid for. And then, and the next thought was, 
did I bomb that bad that they're already talking about it back in New York? <laughs> got back to New York now already. Now we got back to New York that quick. We haven't even got back to New York. And now they're talking about it, and that's what's going on? Unbelievable. Dude, it was oh, so funny. Wow. And just that little 30 seconds was like the whole car came together. Yes. Like that was a story. That's so cool. And it was so funny. I man. love that kind of story, man. Yeah, that's great. But dude, but it... It literally was like a roller coaster because you saw Ghost White and then he became inflamed. Man. Like, you dick. Dude, that's awesome. <laughs> Why did you do that to that's me? That's so awesome, man. Because he already felt the bomb. Oh. He didn't need to feel the burn. God. And Nate, man. Oh, yeah, that my guy. God. I remember when he was on. Um, he just can't can't help himself. Dude, when he was on. Bobby Kelly used to call him the sniper. Yeah. Because he would be on the early YKWDs. Okay. And be quiet for 20 minutes. Yeah. And then he just, boom, and. Everybody, it would be the funniest thing that was said all day. You know what I mean? You know, he would just wait for his moment, and yeah. he would, he would, he would snipe you. It was, it was unbelievable. Yeah, he was, he's, uh, and he deserves all the success he's gotten. He's amazing. Well, and it was one of those guys I would talk to all the time. But then once, like, I learned a long time ago that once your friends start making it, yeah. I, I don't bother them, man. Mm -hmm. But then I saw him at Giannis's wedding, mm. dude, and it was like the best thing. Like he came and gave me a big hug, That's like awesome. asking me and like this and like, dude, it was so great. Man. That's super hanging cool. out with him. And uh, you know, he just, yeah, because a few people that know me come to my shows went and saw him and they did the mm -hmm. meet and greet, or whatever. And they're like, oh, I go to Joel's shows a lot. And he was like, they told me, they're like, oh, how's he doing? That. Like, so it's cool. Like, you know what I mean? He didn't have to do that and no. like ask, but it's, uh, I mean, dude, he's selling out arenas now. Dude, man. that's amazing. I saw him like, open up for Mark Marin at, I think it was the Kimmel Center in Philly yeah. in like 2017, maybe. Yeah. You know? And uh, it's funny because the guy I went with was like, who is that? He's going to be huge. Yeah. I was like, well, he's already on his way. But yeah, and here we are. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Dude, you could tell, man. And he, he stuck with it and was completely true to himself. And you don't even notice it, but never curses. Yeah. 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 Yeah, which makes him even more marketable in you some ways. You can put him in any situation. Right. It's Anything. phenomenal, man. Anything. He can take those corporate gigs and not have to change his whole act. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now, is that something that ever happened in, in music? Where you guys got hired because you, you consider yourself a jam band. Yeah, I have friends. Did you turn down a gig or have to tailor it knowing that you got, got hired? Because that's, I mean, that's a great point that you brought up. Yeah, I've turned down gigs because it, I knew we wouldn't be right for it. You know what I mean? It's a no for us. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah, because I'm, uh, like, I play, I've been at, like, my, um, my uh, dreams of youth of being a rock star or whatever are, have, you know, I know where I'm at. Okay. You know what I mean? If something comes along, great. Right. But I know who I am at this point. But you know it's got to be the right fit. And, yeah, exactly. And I know what I want to do. I right. know what I like. And uh, um, so I'm not, I'm not joining those bands that could do those kind of gigs. I've been okay. offered many times. I've been offered to be in wedding bands. I've been offered to be the house guitar player at, at music theaters and things like that. And uh, it's just not me. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I figured out a way to make a living doing the teaching, and that's how I can afford to do whatever I want musically. You okay. know what I mean? So, uh, with the, as long as I keep doing the lessons, then I can do my my jam band fantasies. Okay. But yeah, so I've turned down gigs. I've um uh and and and, and it was kind of the other st story too, where mm -hmm. um you know you have your other people to to fall back on, so you wouldn't do solo. You feel oh, where, right? We never did that. That's right. No, 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 Not no, no, me. no, no. We we went we went somewhere. Nobody wants to hear me sing. Okay. And you have to sing to be a, a solo act. Yeah. I can do a manageable background vocal, and that's about it. Okay. So, like, you know, you know, Bjorn Jacobson yeah, that we yeah. you've had here, who's yeah. a monster. Love you, Bjorn. Um, he uh, he's the perfect example of a solo act. Now that dude can do anything. Like I've been in five, uh, I've been in three, four, and five piece bands with Bjorn. But he can do solo. He also does a two-man thing with a violinist, Robin. I yeah, yeah. And uh, um, so I don't do it, though, because it's just not my thing. Like, I'm a guitar player. Okay. You know what I mean? I'm not a solo act. Okay. Yeah, unless somebody wants to hire me to just listen to me shred for an hour. Well, it's, it, <laughs> But it's funny, man. I didn't know until uh, today, uh, off camera, mm -hmm. that you were a smoker. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was I smoke. I was a... Big which, time cigarettes. But you're like that doesn't help the vocals, but you don't sing. It does, yeah, no, and you know you just end up sounding like Joe Cocker eventually. You know yeah. what I mean? It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, no, I smoked from teenage to uh, the very beginning of the pandemic. The day we got shut, the, the day the country got shut down, I got paranoid that I couldn't breathe <laughs> and went to buy and got some Nicorette the next day, and I haven't had a cigarette since. No way. Yeah, yeah. 
Yep. So once you put the mask on, that was it. <laughs> yeah, totally, man. Totally. <laughs> yeah. I had a hard time with the mask, man. I would have like I would get myself all worked up about not being able to breathe. It was a weird little phase there. <laughs> but but it led to me to quit smoking after so many years. And I tell you, I feel a million times better. Cold turkey. It. Yeah. And that never had I mean, not not to say the urge, but you never Not never one since. Yeah, no. When really? I once I was done, I was done. So in in one more month it'll be three it'll years. Be three years. Yeah. Congrats, Thanks, man. Thanks, brother. Yeah, no, it was a big deal. It was a big deal, and I feel a million times better for it, you know? Yeah. 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 Little thing you would never know. Right. Right. It did did not curtail my um, my weed usage, but uh, <laughs> but I stopped smoking the cigarettes. Yeah, no one's judging. Yeah, right. Hey, it's all good. It's yeah. A, yeah. So, yeah, no, that was a big thing. Yeah. Well, and that, that comes from uh, a real story, too, where uh, also a year ago, and I, I always say this, half the shows that I do... Uh, are for charity mm-hmm. and uh, the comics always come down and they literally don't know what venue they're going to what the money is or anything like that a lot of times they yeah. just put soul Joel, and then like that monday they'll be like where's the gig what are the details what time is it like whatever and uh, speaks a lot about you so they showed up right wait right thank you they showed up to Stone Harbor. We do the uh, Harbor Square Theater. Oh, that's right. And and they go, well, what's the gig for? What's the, what's the fundraiser? Because they, you know, they want to know if there's words. Because sometimes we'll do we'll do uh, autism benefits. Mm-hmm. And as you can imagine, their only um, criteria is don't say the R word. Mm-hmm. And right. understandably so. Of course. And and but like and, and the comics almost when I tell them. They're so focused on it. They're like, I think I might slip up. Like, I might do it just because. Yeah. Like, but yeah. Like, whatever. Like, they, but they just want to know. Yeah. W- what What's sensitive about? Yeah, and you it. work you, with the, the situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe it's a domestic dispute. Uh, not domestic dispute. Uh, domestic violence or like anything like that. Like, right. just be socially aware. Right. And, and and I love my comics just for asking. That's so cool. Yeah. Right. But then, I'm I'm such a, a high strung individual that I just want to make sure the comics are there, and then once they show up, I forget. So I'm there. Sometimes I don't even uh, I don't even light. Like uh, Julian goes up one time one before the pandemic, he comes off stage. We're at the Valley Forge Casino, and he goes, "How long was I on there?" I go, "Oh, an hour and fifteen minutes." Betty was great. He goes, "Next time, light me," because <laughs> it's like anybody's job. <laughs> Do you enjoy getting overtime? Right, right. No, yeah. not especially if you're not getting paid. <laughs> totally, man. Totally. You're only getting paid for a certain amount. <laughs> right. That's what you want to do. Yes. We agreed to this. Well, that's why you're paying me that. Right. And you're like, oh, you were on a roll. I didn't want to stop you. <laughs> I mean, fantastic. Right. Am I right? He's like, not fantastic. I am sweating. And I was up there for 30 more minutes than you wanted me to have. Yeah. That's great. So uh, so they, they show up, and uh, they're like, what's the fundraiser for? Mm-hmm. And they uh, I go, oh, it's for seniors. It's for their prom. Mm-hmm. And uh, they the, uh, so we go on stage, and uh, the lady from the school shows up, and she goes, it's uh, preschool. And I'm like, I was way <laughs> off, dude. And, and I tell this on stage, and the lady in the crowd goes, I have a kid that's a senior. I'm like, you have a kid that's a senior and a pre-K? Because it's like a huge gap. Like, yeah. something went wrong. Right, right. And she goes, no, I'm just here supporting the cause. And I joke around that she was laughing at all my jokes, just like you do. And uh, she goes, I took an edible. And I'm like, <laughs> dude. I was ready to go home and tell my mom, like, how good I did. I'm feeling so good about I'm myself. I'm like, yeah, I should be on TV. Like, these other comics, they have TV. I don't have TV credits. I should be on TV. <laughs> Like and it's 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 like vodka, it's odorless, it's colorless. That edible will be our little secret. You don't have to let me know that you're on hallucinogenic <laughs> drugs, and that's the reason why you think I'm funny. That's great. That's great, man. Yeah, <laughs> that's too. But funny. also, it was funny because it's like that thing in the room where you thank goodness it's dark, because the rest of the people in the crowd are like, "Who's this animal <laughs> that's telling the comics that they're on drugs?" Yes. Are they also on drugs when they pick their kids up from school? Because that's also a little bit in the gray area. How do you think they get through? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. That's priceless, man. Yeah. <laughs> Some of the stuff you guys hear. Yeah. Man. Well, and, and a few, I mean, comics, too. It's like doesn't really matter, but you can smell uh, that they, you know, they might have been partaking in something. Oh, for sure. For sure. But you're like, man, it's, it's not a... Uh, it's not a well. I guess it would be a performance-enhancing drug. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. it depends but on the person. There are, yeah, 
But a couple of comics have shown up and like, and, and they've been late to gigs and stuff like that. And I'm like, I think I might be smelling ro- smelling why you might have got lost. Yeah, right, right. Yes, yes. And then you, uh, if you ever get Joey Diaz, which I know you've been trying, uh, if he doesn't smoke like this much weed in, in any hour of the day, it's unusual. And nobody functions higher than Joey. I mean, that dude's been killing it for years. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you just never know. It's all the individual. There's a story uh, that I heard that they saw him out at the comedy store. And the comic saw him, was in the green room at the comedy store. It was his first time there. Joey shows up, rolls one up, smokes it, goes on stage, and annihilates. Gets in the green room, rolls another one up. I was like, all right, fellas, I'm out of here. Dude, that's Joey. (laughs) Joey had the, used to have the Church of What's Happening Now podcast, which is incredible. And um, he's doing Uncle Joey's joint now, but it used to be uh, the other one. And he had... uh, uh, Paulie Shore on one time. Okay. Now they never aired most of it. Okay. But Paulie's not a big weed guy apparently, and he uh, he which went, is surprising. Surprising because his whole persona says I smoke weed. You know what I mean? <laughs> but apparently not. So uh, at least not to Joey Diaz's level. Which even okay. if you do smoke weed, you could still not be at Joey's level. And uh, and he went in and apparently did a I forget a couple hits of bong or something or maybe an edible. I can't quite remember before the uh, podcast started. And he started like losing his shit in the podcast and ended up having to stop it and go home. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. So don't, you know, if you're an amateur out there, don't uh, don't partake with Joey Diaz unless you really know what you're getting into. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, I'd smoke with Joey. I'd be all good. Yeah. <laughs> well, a- admittedly so. And I don't know if I ever told you a story. So I'm with Shuli mm-hmm. and I'm with uh, James Mattern. Oh, okay. And it's before the pandemic. Okay. And it was two of the states that I had mentioned that we uh, I'd set up. Uh, one was Vermont mm. and one was, uh, uh, Maine. Oh, wow. And I had never been to Maine. Okay. And so now I've, uh, I've set up shows and I think it's like 25 or 26 different States. Mm-hmm. And when we were in Vermont, I, uh, I was talking to the, 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 the manager of the theater, originally from New Jersey. So we had like this little bit of kinship okay. before the show, uh, this little hippie chick walks over and was talking to her. Uh, the manager was talking to her, and uh, he's like, oh, this is Joel. He's the producer, whatever. And she goes, oh, would you like a weed brownie? And uh, oh boy. he, she was talking to him. Mm-hmm. And he was like, yeah. I would. And then she walked over. She goes, I'm so sorry. Uh, forgive me. I should have asked you. But I should have asked her some more questions. <laughs> oh, no. Because oh, no. I am not from that. Like, I, we're going into uncharted waters. And edibles, man. But I am, uh, first of all, huge fan of brownies. <laughs> let's let's just start there. Second of all, uh, I, I like I, I've always now in the last in the last thirteen years worked for myself. Mm-hmm. So I don't have to, you don't have to worry about testing or any of that. So any I've been working for myself since I was twenty four years yep. old. Just uh, I just have to stay alive. Yeah, that's it. You know, and make sure I keep showing up to work. Difficult enough task it on its own. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, but I take it. Uh, I don't. I don't tell anybody else that's oh in my um, – which I, I should have told Shuli. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. He yeah. would have understood. <laughs> no, and been able to uh, uh, properly direct me. <laughs> yes. Okay. It's okay. Um, Shuli's on stage, and uh, before he even gets off stage, um, I'm on the floor. Yeah. And uh, it's – the rest of the night, it's a blur. Which was bad because I was managing Shuli. Like, we were working together, and uh, I still had to get paid. I'm representing. Right. Uh, I you... made it a little bit through the meet and greet. Okay. But then when they're hanging out with the fans, I am now in the uh, public restroom. Yep. Tossing my cookies. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Well, it was per- it was all my fault <laughs> because I the girl had her own marketing sticker. Mm-hmm. That should have let me know. She's not an amateur. Yeah. 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 And the other thing is that we're in Vermont, right? Yeah. And uh, uh, it's just so so that barely. And I'm like I'm 240 pounds. Let's say I was I was heavier than. Mm-hmm. It was like three weeks before I opened up Soul Joel's. Okay. Yeah. The fall foliage. Yeah. Everything yeah. 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 Full, <laughs> foliage. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So they they got me home to the uh, hotel room. The next day, we're driving around trying to figure out where to go. They were like, go right, I go left. We pull in, uh, part, and then they see um, Ari Finling and um, and Andrew, the two openers mm. 
for Nikki Glaser. Oh. I had manifested this. I said, I go, I knew we were going to be there the same weekend. She had Are You Up, which was on Sirius XM, mm-hmm, yeah. Comedy Central Radio. Shuli was a writer producer for The Stern Show. Yeah. I knew we were going to be there the same night, same weekend. And uh, we ended up having breakfast together. Pen, pen, oh, then she was there the same uh, night again, but we went to Maine. Mm-hmm. I was not feeling my best, probably looked like crap. <laughs> but uh, the pandemic happens. Mm-hmm. She performs a year to that day. That was a year to the day. The same day. I was at that show. Yeah. A year before that, I had taken one too many bites of the <laughs> weed brownie. <laughs> that's amazing, man. What a trip. Smooth. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's priceless, dude. Yeah. That is priceless. Yeah. Well, listen, all you non-weed people thinking about it out there, Watch out with edibles. Oh my gosh, <laughs> they can be widely variable. Go small, small, yeah. small. Yeah, <laughs> but, but with me, or even better, know that you're doing it. Huge sweet tooth. <laughs> yeah, They're right. like Pringles. Once you pop, you can't stop. <laughs> and I didn't. It was a large chunk. It was, no, it was like eating an entire Hershey bar. Oh, dude. Yeah. Oh. It wasn't a. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did I ever tell you about almost killing my buddy with edibles? No. So, so we Brett Ernst show at McGooby's years ago. Okay. And uh, this was pre-legalization. Um, and so I suppose I'm incriminating myself, but it's all good. So uh, I had been experimenting with edibles because of my physical, I have fake hip and, you know, issues with physically. So um, it can be tough for me to just sit still for two hours, you know what I mean? So I had been experimenting with edibles um, for pati- specifically four shows and trying to get the recipe down so it was the right amount. And since I'm a big dude, obviously, and uh, I've uh, been partaking for a while, so I have a tolerance. Yeah. And uh, so every time somebody gave me an edible, the, 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 the code word with edible people was always, bro, don't take the whole thing, man. It's, you know, watch out. It's real heavy. And I would eat the whole thing and want three more, right? So I made the most potent edibles ever, okay? The, 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 the stuff I used turned the chocolate chip cookies black, all right? And my buddy that I went to comedy shows with, who I won't name in case he doesn't want me to tell this story, um, he, uh, um, he, my buddy that went, I went to the first hundred shows I went to with this guy. Okay. okay? He's now married with a kid, so he won't be at shows for a while, but All he'll right. be back eventually when, the, when his, when his uh, young daughter's old enough. So um, I said, dude, I made the cookies from hell. I said, I brought one for you, but I'm recommending don't take more than half. And this guy's no rookie like me, you know what I mean? And he insisted on eating the whole thing like I did. Now, usually an edible for me takes roughly 45 minutes to kick in where you start feeling it, right? About 15 minutes later, I'm tingling. And I was like, oh, if it kicks in that early, it means you got it good, right? Yeah. So, uh, so, so but, but in for comedy terms, yeah. take it right before the show, right around the headliner, mm-hmm. it's kicking in. Boom, exactly. So usually... Boom! <laughs> so, <laughs> Biggity boom! <laughs> So yeah, man, when years I come, later, I would catch on. <laughs> so when I come to a Soul Joe show, man, usually sometime between when I walk in yep. and when uh, Bring Them Out comes on, yeah. I've eaten my little Triscuit filled with Rick Simpson oil. De- so, <laughs> don't mind if I do. Yeah, that's right. So, so we eat these things. We go in. I don't even remember. And you know how I, I have a pretty ridiculous memory for shows, right? Yeah, yeah. surprisingly. Yeah, surprisingly, given all my weed intake. So uh, That I, was the uh, joke. Yeah, I'm sorry <laughs> for overstating the obvious. <laughs> no, thank you for explaining it. <laughs> right on, right well, on. Welcome to why I got into producing. <laughs> <laughs> You're not the first one to explain why it was funny. <laughs> That's awesome. Man. Woo. So I don't remember who the host or the feature are, which is okay. rare for me. So, uh, um so the, the, the host and feature go, I'm soaring it, and it's coming on more and more. And I'm like, I finally did it. This is perfect. Like, I'm locked in. Let's go. Yeah. And uh, now my buddy is as, as freaking OCD as me about comedy, man. Like, we had been to, you know, uh, many, many shows together by then. Neither one of us had ever gotten up for a drink or, or to go to the bathroom, ever. Neither yeah. of us leaves. it. Once the comics go on, we're not leaving our seats. So uh, all of a sudden he gets up about 10 minutes into Brett's act. And I was like, okay, that's interesting. That's unusual. Minutes go by. Now it's like five minutes. I'm like, well, you know, maybe he's going to the, you know, maybe he's in the bathroom. Ten minutes. Finally gets to the point where I'm like, all right, I'm starting to pack my stuff up and get ready to just at least go out into the lobby and find him. You know what I mean? And right then, the girl who managed the McGoobies at the time, 
comes up and says, uh, Mr. Hill, your friend is uh, not feeling well. I said, what's going on? She goes, well, he came out of the bathroom. He's sweaty and pale. And uh, she's like, um, he said he's going to go out to the lie down in the car. I said, okay, well, I'll get my stuff and leave. She goes, no, no, no. She said, make sure to tell him to stay. He said, he'll be fine. Stay and enjoy the show. And I didn't feel that great about it. You know what I mean? So I was like, ah. But he said it. So I was like, all right, I guess I'll, you know. Well, if 10 minutes go by, I'm, I'm like, ah, I can't do this. You know what I mean? I got to go. So I'm packing up my stuff again. Right then she comes back. She goes, he left his keys in his jacket. He was out. This was January. He was standing outside the parking lot at Magoobie's getting destroyed by an edible in the cold, banging on the door because the door's locked behind you there, trying to get somebody's attention so he could get the keys so he could just get in the car. And kind of like out. what we did our producer tonight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah, sorry, buddy. We left you out there, man. Boy, he is taking one long cigarette break. <laughs> Turns out he is outside, <laughs> locked out. Yeah, I guess. Shout I out to Jesse. Thought he loaded up a stogie, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man. So I finally, I'm just like, all right, I gotta, yeah, I gotta get out of here. I run out to the car. He's lying in the back seat of the car, and he looks like death warmed over. And I'm like, dude, are you okay? He goes, I don't think I can drive us home, man. Now, I have driving issues, as you know. I, have, yeah. I can't get on the highway. I have this weird anxiety thing. So uh, um, our deal was he drove. This is why I could take all the edibles I want. Yeah. And he gets us home, right? Oh. He didn't live up to his end of the bargain. He did not live up to his end of the bargain. <laughs> and now I'm... Deal or no deal. It's no deal, man. It is no it's deal. It's no deal. No deal. And now I'm like, you know, and this edible hasn't stopped coming on. Usually it stops coming on during the show at yeah. some point and it levels out. Yeah. This thing's still coming. Yeah. And I'm wandering This around. next wave is like a tsunami. Oh, totally, dude. Totally. I'm strapping myself to a palm tree, you know. And uh, so I'm walking around the parking lot. This is when I still smoked. I'm smoking cigarettes like a chimney trying to psych myself up to get us home. And I get out. I get us out on the highway. I got one exit. I drove us three quarters of a mile, pulled into a uh, gas station, and sat there until six in the morning until he woke up and drove us home. <laughs> so be careful if you accept an edible from me. And did you have to keep uh, turning the car on to keep it warm because it would have got it was freezing. Yeah, yeah. Freezing. I, oh, that was I forgot that part. So I decided I had just I couldn't just pull it. I, in my paranoid grew up in the '80s mind frame. I had to uh, be be there for a reason. Yeah. Right. I couldn't just sit in a parking lot. So I decided to fill up his gas tank. Right. So good guy. Right. Right. Yeah. Good guy. And uh, so I, I pull up, but you have to prepay. So I went into the gas station, gave him 10 bucks, went back out to the car, blinked. And I was in a parking space. I don't know what happened. Now I wake up and it's like half an hour later. Right. Somehow I got from that gas, that, that tank to the parking space 20 feet away. But I don't remember it. Oh, boy. Yeah, I was like, dude, good thing you got off the highway. You know what I mean? And uh, this is why I don't drive on the on, – this is why I don't drive. <laughs> and, uh, Pe period. <laughs> yeah. End of story. <laughs> so I'm sitting there for a minute. I look back, and the gas thing is still open in the on the car. So I get out, and no, I'm starting to like – Another stretch. mystery. Yeah, another mystery here. And I'm stretching out a little bit, trying to get myself together. And all of a sudden, the gas station guy comes out. He goes, hey, chief, you're still here. I said, yeah, I'm still here, man. He goes, you and, never filled up your gas. And, and you are? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, because I don't remember you either, buddy. <laughs> but he said, he ne I never filled up my gas. I paid for gas, walked out, and drove into that parking space without ever filling it up. Oh, boy. I was like, well, I guess I, you know, if, if, he, if, he, can't, if he can't get it anymore, he, it's good. He's like, ah, have at it, chief. You're all good. Go get it. I saved it for you. I was like, okay. I said, do you mind if I sleep in your parking lot? He's like, yeah, ah, go to town, buddy. I was like. All right. Yeah. So, so there it is. Build edible, it up. The edible adventures. Dude, that's a mic drop. <laughs> For Alan Hill, this is Soul Joel. Another episode of Bring Them Out. Like our Facebook page, Soul Joel's at Sunnybrook. Follow us on Instagram at Soul Joel's. Go to souljoels.com for all the upcoming events and shows. Hope to see you soon.